What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Bookie Not Happy Show. Today is January 5th. We're going over four college basketball plays. Back-to-back three-in-one days. We are so close to the sweep. I can feel it. Uh, if this is your first time here, what we are doing is we are going to, we're giving away $40 if we sweep the card to a random person. So all you need to do to qualify, number one, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button right now. Number two, like the video. And then number three, comment below four and O. Oh. Give us the good vibes that we need. As I said, we are three and one back to back days. We're so close. And if and when we sweep this card, I will randomly select somebody from the comments and I will cash app you 40 bucks. All right. That's all you need to do. Easy 40 bucks if we sweep this card. So with that being said, I've got four plays today. It's a little smaller slate, but I think I found some value here. So let's jump right into it. First play we're going over is the biggest and best game of the night. All right. Start you guys off right here with the biggest one. And we're talking about, of course, Illinois going to Purdue. It's a game here of two top 10 teams. You look at Illinois, number nine in the country, 11 and two on the season. They're at Purdue, who's ranked number one. 13 and 1 on the season. Most recently, Illinois beat Northwestern at home. They beat them by 30, easily covering that as a five and a half point favorites. Purdue, on the other hand, most recently went on the road and beat Maryland by 14, covering that as six and a half point favorites. All right, let's jump into each team a little more in depth here. When you talk about Illinois, the big news most recently came out. Their best player, Terrence Shannon Jr., has been suspended due to rape charges, allegations. Um, so that's a big loss for them. We were interested in seeing how they were going to respond, but they did smack Northwestern by 30. Marcus Damask led them with 32 points, and Quincy Guerrier had a double-double with 14 and 10 that game. So they're relying, they're going to rely a lot on Damask. Uh, he's kind of their main guy now with Shannon being out. He's a 6'6 senior, and uh, on the year, he's averaging 13.2 and 4.6 rebounds per game. Illinois currently ranked eighth overall in the Ken Palm rankings. Their offense is 12th in efficiency. Their defense ranks 18th. They play relatively fast. They're ranked 62nd in their tempo as far as their pace of play goes. So that's pretty pretty fast when you talk about the pace. On the other side, looking at Purdue, when you talk about Purdue, you got to start with their big man, Zach Eady. We know he's a monster in there, seven foot four, averaging 23 and 10 on the season, arguably the best, the least biggest and best center in the league or in the, you know, in the country. Purdue enters this game on a six game winning streak. Their only loss was to Northwestern on the road. Um, we talked about them most recently beating Maryland. And uh, it all starts with Edie inside. You know, he has scored 35 points between the last two games. He's dominated inside. Um, they also get good contributions from Braden Smith. He's averaging almost 13 points a game and 5.4 rebounds and uh, leads them with 6.7 assists per game. Fletcher Lawyer is a six foot four sophomore. He's their best shooter. He's got 26 made threes, shooting 39.4% from the three point line. I also really like Lance Jones. Uh, he's another guard for them, averaging almost 11 a game. As far as the numbers go, Purdue is currently ranked second overall in Ken Palm. They have the second most efficient offense in the country and sixth most efficient defense. They're a little bit slower than Illinois, playing 159th in tempo as far as their pace of play goes. So what is our play here? We are going to take Purdue to cover this number at home. I'm not very impressed with Illinois beating Northwestern. You know, Northwestern's also the same team that lost to Chicago State at home. So to me, that doesn't mean much, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I think Illinois is a good team, but not having Shannon is a big loss for them. And they're going to just really struggle inside against Edie. They don't have one player taller than six foot ten. We know Edie is seven foot three. Um, you know, Damask is a nice player, but he's not a knockdown three-point shooter, and you kind of need that if you're going to try to drag Edie outside and space the floor and, and open up those driving lanes. So 
I love Purdue at home. They always have a great home crowd. And uh, that's going to be our first play here. Give us Purdue minus 10 and a half to cover the spread at home. A um, couple other numbers for you real quick. You know, you look at three-point percentage, 38.9% for Purdue, only 34.6% for Illinois. Offensive efficiency, uh, slight adv advantage for Purdue there. Overall, as I mentioned, I like Purdue here. Give us Purdue as our first play, guys, minus 10.5. All right, moving on to the second play here. We're looking at UConn playing Butler. This game, I want to make sure, this game is at Butler. Currently, UConn is six and a half point favorites. All right, let's dig into it. UConn, 12 and two on the year, eight and six against the spread. Butler, on the other hand, 10 and four on the year, seven and six against the spread. UConn is looking for their third consecutive win. Um, you know, they lost 75 to 60 against Seton Hall before the holidays kind of begun. And then they were able to post a 69-65 win against a decent St. John's team. And on Tuesday, the Huskies were 23-point favorites, and they smacked DePaul, and they covered that spread. Cam Spencer has been reliable for them, scoring at least 15 points in four of his five last games. Uh, their top guard, and I think I think he's a future pro, Tristan Newton, has reached 20 points on three consecutive occasions. But most recently, he's kind of slowed down, shooting below 43% in each of his last five games. Klingon is the big man in the middle. He's dealing with an ankle injury, and he will not play, which is a big loss for this team. Huskies are marked fifth in the country in Ken Palm ratings. Uh, they jumped one spot to number four um, most recently after their win. And, uh, however, UConn is 0-2 on the road. They have reached 80 points in two of their last five games and are scoring on average, though, 83.1, which is 35th in the country. On the other side, looking at Butler, they're looking for their second conference win. They beat Georgetown by 10 points in the opener, and they lost most recently to Providence in a close game. Pierre Brooks scored 20 points in the loss to Providence. However, he had 11 points on Tuesday. The junior guard is averaging 16.4 uh, points per season and shooting 37.9% from the three-point line. Posh Alexander is another guy that scores well for them. He's averaging 11 and about four and a half rebounds per game. In general, when you look at the Ken Palm rankings, they rank 62nd in the ratings, and they are undefeated at home where they are 8-0 on the season. Our play here, we don't do it a ton, but we are going to take an over in this game, okay? Currently, the line is 144 and a half, all right? When you look at what these two teams average, 83 points per game, which is 21st in the country for UConn, and 81 points per game, which is 41st in the country for Butler. You take those two numbers, what is that? 80, that's 164 if you were to just combine them. Obviously, it doesn't work like that, but it's still 20 points over the number that we're getting here of 144 and a half. Beyond that, you look at effective field goal percentage. UConn, 57.3% effective field goal percentage. They're very efficient in scoring the ball. That's 12th in the country. And then Butler, 52.8% effective field goal percentage, ranked 83rd in the country. Okay. Two-point percentage, Connecticut, number four in the country. Butler, number 53 in the country. You know, so these are teams that can really score the ball. They can shoot the ball well. Um, we talked about the big man for UConn not being in the game here. Um, that's going to really open up driving lanes for Butler. Uh, UConn does not defend the three very well, ranked 255th in three-point defense. So that that's going to open up more three-point opportunities for Butler. I think this game really gets up and down. And, uh, you know, Butler, they're scoring a lot at home. They're averaging 88 points in its last five games at home. And so I love the over here. Like I said, um, they play at a high tempo. This game is going to get up and down. We're getting a good difference when you look at what the average compared to what the total is. So give us the over here, over 140, 
four and a half in the UConn Butler game. All right, those were the two kind of biggest games that I kind of uh, noticed on the slate. So we've got two smaller ones to go over here. And the first one we're going to talk about is going to be Boise State at San Jose State. Current line is Boise State favored by five, maybe some places five and a half points. Let's jump into this one. Most recently, Boise State played Utah Valley, and they won 85 to 63 in their last game. And when you look at this team, you know, they ended up shooting 67.6% .6 from the free throw line, which can definitely be concerning in their most recently, most recent game. And uh, I think, uh, you know, Boise State heads into this game with a 9-4 and four mark on the year. They averaged 75.8 points per game, which is ranked 168th, while hitting 46.2% from the floor. They are 34.1% on three-pointers on the year. And like I mentioned, just okay from the free throw line at 70.6. Defensively, they're for forcing their opponents into 12.5 turnovers per game. Their opponent's field goal percentage is 42.9%. All right. On the other side, looking at San Jose State, they're 7-7 seven and seven on the year. And they, they're... They're assisting their teammates 14.1 times per game, which is 144 in Division One, And they, on the defensive end, they're ranked 181 in college as far as giving up points per game as they give up 71.4 points per game. They do force 11.6 turnovers per game. However, they allow their teams to shoot 43.6% from the floor, which is not very good. It's ranked 228th in the nation. So what is our play here? We are going to go ahead and take San Jose State here to cover this as five underdogs, all right? When you look at the ATS situation against the spread, Boise State won four and one against the spread on the road. And so I think this is just too many points. I think this game is close. Uh, you know, San Jose State shoots it slightly better from the three-point line, 35.4 compared to 34.9. And so, uh, yeah, that's going to be our second, or I'm sorry, our third play of the day. Give us San Jose State at home to cover this as five-point underdogs. All right, moving now to our fourth and final play here. I've got another total for you here. We're looking at Iona versus St. Peter's. This is a game that's at St. Peter's. Current line is 125 is the total number here. You look at Iona, you know, they are 6-7 and seven overall, 1-1 one one conference play, and St. Peter's is 6-5, and 2-0 and oh in conference play. Iona defeated Harvard 69-60 to 60 last Saturday, and St. Peter's beat Bucknell 67-58 last Saturday. Digging in a little more to both these teams, though, Iona is scoring an average of only 71.5 points per game. Remember that as we talk more about the scoring. That's 267 in the country, okay, while shooting only 42.5% from the floor, which is 279 in the country, and 35.4%, which is 107, right around the average when you talk about from the three-point line. But they also can't shoot free throws, okay? 65.5% from the free throw line. They do defend decently. They're giving up only 70, almost 71 points per game, which is 167. Opponents are shooting 44.5%. And they defend three well, giving up 33.4% from the three-point line, which is 216 in the country. On the other side, looking at St. Peter's, Again, this isn't a total for a reason here that we're looking at. They're only averaging 63.3 .3 points per game, shooting 38.7, which is 356th overall in the country, guys. Okay, very, very bad. Uh, these are two very bad scoring teams here. So our play here is going to be an under, all right? I like the under here. When you look at the tempo of both teams, Iona, 69, okay, adjusted tempo is, is, is 202nd 
in the country. And St. Peter's is much slower at 63.5 adjusted tempo, which is 358th in the country. This, you know, these things combine to just create a very low scoring game. This game opened at 127 and a half. It has been bet down to 125. Uh, I suggest taking it as soon as possible before it drops even lower here. So that's going to be our fourth and final play. Take the under currently at 125 in the Iona versus St. Peter's game. That'll be our fourth and final play. That's going to wrap it up for the Bookie Not Happy Show. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're looking to give away 40 bucks to a random person. All you need to do is number one, subscribe. Number two, like the video. Number three, comment below four and oh. Give us the good vibes. If and when we sweep this card, I will select somebody randomly and I'll cash at you 40 bucks. As always, our motto on the show is to make your bookie not happy. Let's have a great day today. Best of luck, and I'll see you on the next show.